What you see here on this picture is a place called Mount Whaleback, Australia. Now, many of you in the room, even if you've been to Australia, probably haven't heard of a place called Mount Whaleback because it's in the western part of Australia, which is one of their states that's about five times the size of Texas, and up until recently has been pretty sparsely populated. But in recent years, about 100 people a day have been immigrating into Western Australia, primarily because of the mining activities around this Billiton-owned uh, area in Mount Whaleback. Every day, there's a million tons of iron ore that are exported to China. They excavate the ground with trucks that have wheels that are twice as high as me. They put them on the longest freight train in the world that has 334 cars and is over two miles long and they travel 300 miles to a place called Port Headland where they're put on eight different ships that dispatch daily to feed China's growing demand for iron ore, which of course is used for steel, to fund constructions and appliances and various other things. Now, iron ore and copper are not the only raw materials that have been highly sought after in recent years. We all know from going to the gas pump and looking at our power and natural gas bills every day. It always takes people about 20 seconds to read that. Um, that uh, energy prices have been skyrocketing over recent years as well. They peaked in 2008 and went back down again in 2009, but have been going up. And it's not just raw materials and, and energy products, but really any commodity. If you were to chart from 2000 until today, the increases in raw material prices, you could see they spiked in 2006, 2007, 2008. A lot of these things are traded on commodity markets, so they somewhat reflect the uh, global economic um, situation. So they dipped down again in 2009, but then went back up to record highs here over the past um, few months in the summer. And this is everything from coffee beans to corn to the cotton that we use for apparel products. And it's leading to some really crazy behaviors. So you thought manhole covers and stealing copper was odd. One of the biggest problems they have in the Midwest is people stealing pigs. There have been over a thousand pigs stolen in southern Minnesota and Iowa in the past 90 days. You get $200 for a pig, and they're pretty easy to steal because they don't keep them in barns. They actually keep them out in the middle of the crops far away from where the farmers live. So you can come in the middle of the night and back up a truck, pick yourself up a couple hundred pigs, and send them off to the places they do whatever they do with pigs, and they're gone. Right? Now, you look at all this stuff around raw material prices and food and some of the crazy things that the people doing, and you think, this is only going to get worse, right, as population increases. What's going to be like in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years from now? And that's one of the biggest challenges that we face, um, not only as a supply chain, but as a civilization. Well, the good news is, although population rates were exploding throughout most of the 20th century, the actual growth of the worldwide population is going to start to taper off. So here in the next six months, we're actually going to hit 7 billion people on the planet. And that will continue to rise up to about 9 billion by the year 2050. Countries like India, most of the countries in Africa, most of the countries in Asia will continue to experience significant population growth. But then it's going to level off around 9.2 billion. And surprisingly, a lot of the countries like Russia, Japan, even some of the countries in Eastern Europe are going to actually experience population decline by up to 10%. It'll be a problem here in the United States as well. So, well, in the newspapers today, you hear about immigration battles in Arizona and Alabama. Um, demographic experts predict that in 30 years, the United States is going to be begging people to immigrate to our country because uh, there's going to be such a shortage of labor. Actually, the biggest problem is not going to be lack of energy, lack of food, lack of raw materials for the supply chain, but actually lack of water. So even though water covers 70% of the planet's surface, only about 2% of that water is actually useful to drink. And as the population grows, more, pe more people get into the middle class, they start using laundry machines, they start using power. Water is pretty much used in everything that our, uh, our daily lives require. There's going to be more and more scarcity around water. We also, as a civilization, have overexploited a lot of our water resources or not managed them very well. For example, the city of London, 30% of the water pumped through its underground piping system is lost due to leaks because it's been poorly maintained. Um, so water scarcity will actually be a huge problem. 